In this chapter, we will discuss theories and techniques of group counseling. The purpose of this chapter is to present a framework on how to apply techniques in groups and to show the connection between theory and technique. Let's discuss first why theory is important. A theory provides us with a structure for designing appropriate interventions and evaluating the outcomes of the group as a whole and of the individual members. Also, a theory provides a frame of reference. This is for understanding and evaluating the world of the client, especially when it comes to building rapport, making an assessment, defining problems, and selecting appropriate techniques in meeting the goals of the members. We have to remember that when we attempt to make an intervention and implement techniques as a group leader without having a clear theoretical rationale, it's much like trying to build a house without a set of blueprints. As a group counselor, it is important to consider whether you see the past, present, or future as being the most productive focus for group work. If you believe your member's past is a crucial aspect to explore, many of your interventions may be aimed at assisting them in understanding how their past is connected to their present behavior. If you think your member's goals and striving are important, your interventions are likely focused on the future. If you are oriented toward the present, many of your interventions are likely emphasize what the members are thinking feeling, and doing in the moment. Group counselors are sometimes asked to identify what theory they follow. None of them subscribe to any single theory in its totality. Rather, they function within an integrative framework that they continue to develop and modify as they practice. An integrative approach involves the process of selecting concepts and methods from a variety of systems. And there are multiple pathways to achieving this integration. Two of the most common are technical integration and theoretical integration. When leading a group, we pay attention to what group members are thinking, feeling, and doing. This entails attending to the cognitive, affective, and behavioral domains. There is a reciprocal interaction between what people are thinking and how these thoughts influence what they are feeling and doing. What we are feeling can also affect our thinking and behavior. How we behave has an influence on what we are feeling and thinking. Combining these three domains is the basis for a powerful and comprehensive approach to counseling practice. How to use group techniques effectively. In facilitating a group, we use a variety of techniques, drawn from many theoretical models. Techniques are adapted to the needs of the group participants, and we consider several factors. The purpose and type of group, readiness of the members to confront a personal issue, cultural background, value system, and trust in us as leaders. We also consider the level of cohesion and trust among group members when deciding on appropriate intervention. Techniques are most useful when they evolve from work of the group participants and are tailored to the situation that evolved in a particular group meeting. It is important to use techniques you have some knowledge about, preferably those you have experienced personally or have received supervision in using. Here are the guidelines in our practice to increase the effectiveness of techniques or any structured exercises that we might introduce in a group session. Techniques used have a therapeutic purpose and are grounded in some theoretical framework. Techniques and exercises are presented in an invitational manner. Members are given the freedom either to participate in or to skip a given experiment. Techniques are introduced in a timely and sensitive manner and are abandoned if they are not working. Techniques are modified so that they are suitable for the client's cultural and ethnic background. Participants have an opportunity to share their reaction to the techniques or activities used. The client's self-exploration and self-understanding is fostered. Viewing a group through a multicultural lens, 
to work effectively with culturally diverse youth members. All dimensions of identity, including age, gender, sexual orientation, ability, and religious affiliation must be considered, regardless of your theoretical perspective. As a group counselor or leader, we need to adjust and make sure that the techniques are tailored to suit members' cultural and ethnic backgrounds. As a result, this can increase the chances of creating positive outcomes. Let's go now to the relationship of theories to techniques. Some techniques cut across a variety of theories, and others are linked into particular theoretical approaches. The following sections consider the key concepts and techniques of a number of counseling theories, which were grouped into four general categories. Psychodynamic approaches includes all the theories in psychology that see human functioning based upon the interaction of drives and forces within the person, particularly unconscious, and between the different structures of the personality. Under psychodynamic are psychoanalytic therapy and Adlerian therapy. Psychoanalytic therapy is based largely on insight, unconscious motivation, and reconstruction of the personality. Many theories of counseling and psychotherapy have borrowed and integrated principles and techniques from psychoanalytic approaches. The psychoanalytic approach views people as being significantly influenced by unconscious motivation and early childhood experiences. Experiences during the first six years of life are seen as the roots of one's problem in the present. The past is relevant only as it influences the present and the future. And in this sense, all three have an essential place in group therapy. Therapeutic goals of psychoanalytic therapy is to make the unconscious conscious. Rather than solving immediate problems, the goal is the restructuring of personality. A significant development of psychoanalytically oriented group therapy is the growing recognition of the central importance of the therapeutic relationship. Major techniques include maintaining the analytic framework, free association, interpretation, dream analysis, analysis of resistance, and analysis of transference. These techniques are geared to increasing awareness, acquiring insights, and beginning a working through process that will lead to a reorganization of the personality. Two key features of psychodynamic group therapy are ways that transference and counter-transference are played out in the context of the current group situation. The group consolation lends itself to a multiple transference that provide for reenacting past unfinished events, especially when other members stimulate such intense feelings in an individual that he or she sees in them some significant figure such as father, mother, sibling, life partner, spouse, ex-lover, or boss. By relieving the past through the transference process, members gain increased awareness of the ways in which the past is obstructing present functioning. The other side of members' transference is the counter-transference of the group leader, whose feelings may become entangled in the therapeutic relationship with members obstructing objectivity. Newton and colleagues describe counter-transference as the therapist experiencing feelings from the past that are reactivated by patient in the present. For example, a group leader who feels unappreciated by others in his personal life may experience difficulty working with members who are demanding and communicate that he is failing to meet their needs. Personal therapy is valuable in helping leaders to recognize signs of counter-transference and in discovering how their own needs and motivations influence their group work. When group therapists study their own internal reactions and use them to understand the members of their groups, counter-transference can greatly benefit the therapeutic work. A learning therapy approach focuses on the unity of the person. Individuals are not being viewed as sick or suffering from a psychopathological disorder and needing to be cured. Adler holds the inherent feelings of inferiority initiate a natural striving toward achieving a higher level of mastery and competence in life. 
Adlerians place emphasis on the family constellation as a key factor in influencing one's style of life. A key goal of an Adlerian group is fostering social interest or facilitating a sense of connectedness with others. Therapy provides encouragement and assists group members in changing their cognitive perspective and behavior. Adlerian group therapists strive to establish and maintain an egalitarian therapeutic alliance and a person-to-person relationship with the members of their groups. Interpretation is a key technique of Adlerian group counselors and involves a leader addressing members' underlying motives for behaving the way they do in the here and now. Interpretations are open-ended presentations of clinical hunches that can be explored in group sessions. The ultimate goal of this process is that participants will come to a deeper psychological understanding of themselves. The technique of catching oneself involves helping individuals identify signals associated with their problematic behavior or emotions. If participants hope to change, they need to set tasks for themselves and do something specific about their problems. Furthermore, Commitment needed to translate to new insights into concrete action. Adlerians are flexible in adapting their interventions to each group member's unique life situation. Adlerians' interest in helping others in social interest, in pursuing meaning in life, in belonging, and in collective spirit fits well with the group process. This approach respects the role of the family as an influential in personality development and stresses social connectedness in establishing meaningful relationship in a community. All of these characteristics make the Adlerian approach to group counseling suitable for working with a wide range of client problems. The relationship-oriented approaches, sometimes known as experiential approaches, are grounded on the premise that the therapeutic relationship fosters a creative spirit of inventing techniques aimed at increasing awareness, which allows individuals to change some of the patterns of thinking, feeling, and behaving. The existential perspective holds that we define ourselves by our choices, although outside factors restrict the range of our choices. We are ultimately the authors of our lives. There are six prepositions of existential therapy. First, we have the capacity for self-awareness. Second, because we are basically free beings, we must accept responsibility that accompanies our freedom. Third, we have a concern to preserve our uniqueness and identity. We come to know ourselves in relation to knowing and interacting with others. Fourth, The significance of our existence and the meaning of our life are never fixed once and for all. Instead, we recreate ourselves through our projects. Number five, anxiety is part of human condition. Six, death is also a basic human condition. And the reality of our mortality heightens our sense of ultimate aloneness. The reality of death can lead to increased awareness that we do not have forever to actualize our being. Death awareness can give significance to living. The principal goal of an existential group is to assist the participants in recognizing and accepting the freedom they have to become the authors of their own lives. Group leaders encourage members to examine the ways in which they are avoiding their freedom and the responsibility that accompanies it. The central purpose of this kind of group is to enable members to discover themselves as they are by sharing their existential concerns. The existential approach places primary emphasis on understanding members' current experience, not on using therapeutic techniques. Existential group therapists are free to adapt their interventions to their own personality and style. However, their interventions are guided by a philosophical framework about what it means to be human. Existential group counselors respect the uniqueness of the particular situation of each client and do not impose their cultural values on the person to establish mutually agreed upon goals with individuals that will provide a direction for change. The person-centered approach 
rests on the assumption that we have the capacity to understand our problems and that we have the resources within us to resolve them. This approach emphasizes fully experiencing the present moment, learning to accept oneself, and deciding on the ways to change. A major goal is to provide a climate of safety and trust in the therapeutic setting so that the client, by using the therapeutic relationship, for self-exploration, can become aware of blocks to growth. Emphasizing the crucial role of the therapist's attitudes and personal characteristics, this approach makes the therapeutic process relationship-centered rather than technique-centered. This therapy is best considered as a way of being rather than a way of doing. Techniques person-centered therapy has evolved through diversity, inventiveness, creativity, and individualization in practice. A newer version of the person-centered approaches, group facilitators have increased freedom to participate in the relationship, to share their reaction, to confront clients in a caring way, and to be active in the therapeutic process. Person-centered expressive arts therapy uses various artistic forms, movement, drawing, painting, sculpting, music, and improvisation. Toward the end of growth, healing and self-discovery, individuals who have difficulty expressing themselves verbally can find new possibilities for self-expression through the various non-verbal forms of expression available to them. One potential limitation of this approach is the fact that some clients come to a group to find solutions for pressing problems. Individuals from certain cultures may expect a directive leader who functions in an expert role as an authority, who offers advice and recommends a specific course of action. And they may experience difficulty with a leader who does not provide the structure they want. The gestal approach is an existential and phenomenological approach based on the assumption that individuals and their behavior must be understood in the context of their ongoing relationship with the present environment. The group therapist's task is to support the members as they explore their perceptions of reality. The fundamental method to assist this exploration of is awareness of the internal, intrapersonal, world in contact with the external environment. Key concepts of just a therapy approach focuses on the here and now, direct experiencing awareness, bringing unfinished business from the past into the present, and dealing with unfinished business. Other concepts include energy and blocks to energy, contact, and paying attention to non-verbal cues. The primary goal of Gestalt therapy is attaining awareness and greater choice. Awareness includes knowing the environment and knowing oneself, accepting oneself, and being able to make contact. Gestalt group leaders think more in terms of experiments than techniques. Gestalt therapy utilizes the experiment to move group members from talk to action and experience. For example, Assume a member is talking about a problematic relationship with a friend. The leader is likely to invite this member to bring a friend symbolically into the room, either by talking to an empty chair or talking directly to another group member, as tough he or she were the friend. With the emphasis given to the relationship between client and therapist, there is a creative spirit of suggesting, inventing, and carrying out Experiments aimed at increasing awareness. The centrality of whatever it is in the group member's awareness is an ideal way to understand his or her world. There are many opportunities to apply gestalt experiments in creative ways with diverse client populations. Experiments are done with the collaboration of the group member and with the attempt to understand the background of the member's culture. Psychodrama is primarily an action approach to group counseling in which clients explore their problems through role-playing, enacting situations using various dramatic devices to gain insight, discover their own creativity, and develop behavioral skills. Significant events are enacted to help the members of the group to get in contact with unrecognized 
and unexpressed feelings to provide a channel for the full expression of these feelings and attitudes. Catharsis is a natural part of psychodramatic process, but it is not itself a goal. Simply rediscovering buried emotion will not bring about healing. These feelings must be worked through for integration to occur. Other goals of psychodrama include encouraging participants to live in the present and to behave in more spontaneous ways. A main aim is to open up unexplored possibilities for solving conflicts and for living more creatively. Caution should be used when employing psychodrama techniques. Competent practitioners who use psychodrama framework for practice devote a great deal of time to developing their skills, and they will have undergone a training program under the supervision of an experienced clinician. Psychodrama works best with clinicians who are well-grounded in professional judgment and open to drawing methods from various approaches. It is important to remember that practitioners can use certain aspects or techniques of psychodrama without employing a complete enactment. If group members are uncomfortable in talking about deeply personal matters, let alone displaying their emotions in front of others, some psychodrama techniques are most likely not appropriate. Many of these techniques can be adapted to pro- problem-solving approach that makes use of cognitive and behavioral principles. Role-playing techniques can be productively adapted to structured situation dealing with trying on a new set of specific behavior. Cognitive Behavioral Approaches Behavior therapy is a type of therapy that treats mental health disorder. It seeks to identify and help change potentially self-destructive or unhealthy behaviors can be changed. Behavior therapy is focused on increasing the person's engagement in positive or socially reinforcing activities. It measures what the person is doing and then seeks to increase chances for positive experience. The therapeutic relationship developed between the therapist and client over time, for without this connection, there can be no effective or meaningful therapy. Positive reinforcement, complementing and providing rewards or privileges in response to desired behavior. Time out. Removing access to desired activity because of unwanted behavior. Response cost. Withdrawing rewards or privileges because of unwanted behavior. Token economy. Combining reward and consequence. Client earns rewards and privileges when performing desired behavior. Problem-solving skills. Clients learn concrete methods for dealing with practical problems within their cultural framework. Cognitive therapy. It focuses on present thinking, behavior, and communication rather than on past experiences and is oriented toward problem solving. It has been applied to a broad range of problems including depression, anxiety, panic fears, eating disorders, substance abuse, and personality problems. The goal of CBT is to help the individual enact change in thinking patterns and behaviors, thereby Improving quality of life not by changing the circumstances in which the person lives, but by helping the person take control of his or her own perception of those circumstances. Group leaders must also have a cognitive conceptualization of cases, must be creative and active and be able to engage members through a process of questioning and be knowledgeable and skilled in the use of cognitive and behavioral strategies. Techniques Cognitive restructuring or reframing, guided discovery, exposure therapy, journaling and thought records, activity scheduling and behavioral activation, behavioral experiments, relaxation and stress reduction, role playing, successive approximation. Cognitive therapy tends to be culturally sensitive because it uses individuals' belief system as a part of the method of self-change. Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy is a short-term form of a psychotherapy that helps you identify self-defeating thoughts and feelings, challenge the rationality of those feelings, and replace them with a healthier, more productive beliefs. 
The therapeutic goal of REBT is to get rid of patients' current negative philosophies and replace them with ones that are more realistic and flexible as a means of finding happiness. REBT practitioners strive to unconditionally accept the members of their groups and to teach them to unconditionally accept others and themselves. REBT techniques, problem-solving techniques, cognitive restructuring techniques, coping techniques. REBT stresses the relationship of individuals to the family, community, and other systems. This orientation is consistent with valuing diversity and the interdependence of being an individual and a productive member of the community. Reality therapy is a form of counseling that views behaviors as a choice. It states that psychological symptoms occur not because of mental illness, but due to people irresponsibly choosing behaviors to fulfill their needs. Reality therapy overall goal is to help people find better ways to meet their needs for survival, love, belonging, power, freedom, and fun. A key concept of reality therapy is no matter how hard our circumstances may be, we always have the choice. Involvement of both leaders and members are demonstrated by the leader throughout the life of a group. WDEP wants, exploring wants, needs, and perception. D, for direction and doing. E, for evaluation. P, for planning and commitment. Creating plan is essential part also of the process of RT group. It demonstrates the respect for both leaders and members for the respect for cultural values and by helping them explore how satisfying their current behavior. Postmodern Approaches Solution Focus Brief Therapy Therapists find a problem with a group member by letting them talk about the problem, but focus more on possible solution. To establish goals and preferences of the group members, it aims to make members think about the future and what they want to be different in their lives. Instead of aiming to make changes happen, therapists create an atmosphere of understanding and acceptance. Collaboration of group therapists and group members opens up range of possibilities for present and future change through establishing clear, specific, realistic, and personally meaningful goals. Avoid concentrating too much on problems but go for the solutions to move in a positive direction. Therapists use open-ended questions with respect, genuine curiosity, sincere interest and openness to enable members to describe things in their own words and enhance solution by providing space for members to reflect on future possibilities. One sample question is, what do you think needs to happen to make things work a little better at work? Pre-therapy is asking clients, what they have done before the therapy that has made a difference to the problem? This is for them to rely less on the therapist and more on their own resources to reach their goals. Exception questions lead clients to remember the days or time their problems are absent and encourage a member to replicate those conditions. Miracle questions allows members to describe life without problem, to focus them in searching for solution, and recognizing small improvements toward goals. Scale questions is specifying improvements in a particular scale of 0 to 10. Summary feedback is being provided by therapists in the form of genuine affirmation or pointing out particular strengths that clients have demonstrated. Providing credits for the changes that they are making through statements such, What have these improvements taught you about yourself? Creating an atmosphere of understanding and acceptance allows a diverse range of individuals to utilize resources to make constructive changes, letting their experiential world express rather than approaching them with preconceived notion about their worldview. Narrative therapy. In this therapy, we separate an individual from the problem, avoiding clients from adopting the fixed view of their identity. Narrative therapists invite group members to describe experience in fresh language, which goal is to identify the societal standards and expectations internalized by members 
in ways that constrain and narrow the kind of life they are capable of living and open new vistas of what is possible. New therapists do not assume that they have special knowledge about the lives of clients because members are the primary interpreter of their own experience. Separating problems from the person's identity. Questions are being used to generate stories to provide clients an opportunity to explore various dimensions of their life situations. Members can learn that they are not locked to their problem-saturated stories and can develop alternatives and more constructive stories. Members come to understand how oppressive social practices affect them, which allows them for the possibility of creating alternative stories. The feminist therapy believed that the first step toward change is becoming aware of how society has influenced our beliefs and behavior, especially with respect to views pertaining to gender roles, helping men and women recognize, claim, and embrace their personal power. Feminist therapy and Adlerian therapists share common ground in their emphasis on social interest and social equality. The person-centered therapist and feminist therapist convey genuineness in striving for mutual empathy between client and therapist. Egalitarian manner and use empowerment strategies help clients to live according to their own values and rely on an internal locus of control in determining what is right for them. Gender role analysis explore impact of gender role expectations on individual psychological well-being and draws upon this to make decisions about modifying gender role. Power analysis help individuals understand how unequal access to power and resources can influence realities. Social action becomes more grounded and suggests clients to become involved in volunteering at community health work. Participating will empower them to see the link between personal experience and societal context. Feminist perspectives have application for understanding power of inequities due to racial and cultural factors. Neither feminist and multicultural focus on exclusively an individual change but both emphasize direct action for social change. Both have worked to establish policies to lessen the opportunities for discrimination of all types, age, gender, race, culture, sexual orientation, ability, and religion.